uh, slide deck and prepare some SLI about EDS book. Uh, for those that are, don't know me, and uh, I am research fellow of the Environmental Sustainability Grand Challenge. And today I'm gonna introduce or highlight the Environmental data Science book that some of you, you are familiar, uh, maybe some of you know, but the thing is like at the end you have some flavors of what we're doing. EDS book is a computational notebook community for open environmental science. So in, in these slides, I will cover uh, four main uh, topics. First, uh, people who are not familiar with scientific notebooks, who, some background on that. Then I will uh, go through the rationale, uh, how to contribute, some description of the infrastructure, uh, achievements. And after that, I will highlight a recent effort that we hosted uh, this Climate Informatic Repository Challenge that was very beneficial for the project. And finally, I will present some priorities areas of the initiative. Feel free to uh, add questions in the in the attendee or chat. I will try to cover that later after presentation. So uh, maybe people who are not familiar about scientific notebooks uh, during these holidays <laughs> that I have this break, I have the opportunity to read uh, a book about the adventures of Alexander von Humboldt, that it was a, a very famous uh, natural, naturalist, uh, a geographer, I would say, exploring the world and trying to understand ecology and patterns of vegetations and plants and animals around the world, especially in the tropics. Uh, he was taking observations of the different uh, like, like ecology aspects. Uh, for instance, in this illustration, he was mixing art and science to try to inform and share their his scientific discoveries uh, to Europe in that time, to the uh, modern world in the old continent. And in somehow he was sending these notebooks and sharing, and they took many years, oh no, years, like two years to ship copies to Europe from, from the old continent and so on. So scientific notebooks being a kind of like way that uh, scientists been sharing information and I'm sharing this link. Maybe people who are interested in the, in the, the book that I read is very interesting and very fascinating. But uh, around 2000, uh, we see that with the scientific computation, we start to see that uh, emerging uh, programming languages, uh, maybe back in the 90s, uh, like Python, were offering certain capabilities to explore and analyze data. But in terms of scientists, uh, were enough, were, the shell that this Python were offered was, wasn't enough. So uh, in, the, in that particular case, Fernando Perez, now that, at that time was graduate student at Colorado University Boulder. He is now easy Berkeley. He created IPython, that it was more an interactive shell where he was doing a, a particular experiments in physics and starting to, in an interactive manner as we were in science, try to explore data and analyze this data. And this IPython was a new way to you present the data and visualize resource. Uh, Fernando Perez and community that he reached in 2014, he, he started a kind of spin-off project with a large community of people interested in this. And uh, he this IPython uh, turns on a uh, evolved to a Jupyter file format or Jupyter community in, in general. And Jupyter uh, is more uh, programming agnostic. So people can run uh, Python, can run Julia, can run R notebooks. And it's not just the Jupyter notebook file format. It, it has a kind of ecosystem of a uh, graphical user interface uh, uh, services and Jupyter Hub to run and host experiments uh, in uh, for visualization or for education. And as well, have a plenty of application in the industry. In the industry, uh, maybe people who are not familiar with uh, Jupyter notebooks and um, in terms of this file format, the the there was an interesting talk that I I was participating in the Jupyter Com last year, and was by Julia Bachemann, and she was providing like five tips about good practices of Jupyter notebooks for air observation. And she provides some facts about Jupyter notebooks. Around two a billion Jupyter notebooks are available on GitHub. There are certain estimates that are in total 10, 10 million, but most of these notebooks are duplicates. Uh, within 10 years, Jupyter became the facto standard for data exploration, analysis, and training. And mostly of this file format was is used for research experimentation, development of machine learning, pipeline, pipelines, and education. So, but 
of course, is, is a file format, is a, a development, and there are many pitfalls and challenges where you're using this format. First, it's like uh, out of order execution of the code cell fosters poor coding practices. So for instance, uh, in this example that you can see, the, the first row is, uh, is a variable that is declared up with a value equal to five, and the second, the second cell is equal to 10. But if, if you run if you run again the first the first cell, uh, the the value that returns the variable is gonna be uh, uh, five. But uh, even in Jupyter in Jupyter notebook trying to uh, promote uh, this graph reduce interface indicate the state of the variable and the running order. There are people who are not aware about this and and you can make errors in the order if you run your notebook and if you are not running this notebook in a linear manner. Uh, secondly, uh, I guess uh, another pitfall is like uh, the efforts that uh, and, and challenges to make this notebook reposable and reusable. And uh, maybe uh, there are questions uh, about how many of these notebooks uh, on GitHub could be executed and how many of them can produce the same results. So these notebooks were provided by Julia and she said that almost 25% of the notebooks could be executed. So it is very a quarter of these notebooks that you can find can be only executed and only 4% of these produce the same results. And this is based on, on uh, scientific finders. There are studies that you can watch the recording and you can find the, 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 the reference to these studies in this recording. And finally, another pitfall of this Jupyter notebook, sorry, that is a typo there. It should be Jupyter notebooks, but uh, annotations are not evenly with a notebook. So it means that most of the tests, or because in the in the notebook format, you can meet narrative or test with code, with with a code. And most of the tests is usually the confining notebooks are at the beginning. And there are more like plenty of code cells and they are not well documented. And you can find that uh, in, if you see the proportion of the code and, and narrative of markdown, there are more code that narrated, so it may it may, it may be difficult to understand this. So this is a general thing. So pitfall that you you can find for people who are uh, like early adopters of this kind of format. So it, it comes that uh, there is a need for best practices, and and here you can find different studies who try to uh, document in a with uh, scientific evidence, how you can write and share Jupyter notebooks, how it can make this notebook reproducible and how to foster collaboration and how to use notebooks in academic classroom. Everyone is welcome to get back to this presentation. And if you want to have a look of these specific uh, studies, uh, feel free because they they have a, a great like cover, coverage of what, what all these kind of uh, like uh, opportunities you have in these different uh, topics. But it's here where we start this, this, this kind of motivation with uh, this book. And it's essentially to have more a practical way to cover these problems. And I, you can see here uh, myself when, for instance, I, I have a kind of prototype of a demonstrator that I wasn't uncertain if it was really ready to share to others. So it, this is the way that you can find most of us who have this kind of demonstrator. So EDS book, aims to cover and avoid this kind of uh, pitfalls uh, of the of the proportion of tests and code and as well about the execution through a collaboration with people who can improve the narrative, people who can suggest which are the best open source tools that you can do for optimize your visualization or analysis. And then finally, we have a team that is dedicated to helping you to make these notebooks reproducible and reusable and at the end, each of these uh, and notebooks that you customize potentially can help others to start their own analysis. So that's why we are trying to achieve we, here with the EDS book and it was a motivation for that. So EDS book, in, in, in EDS book, we co-create computational notebooks to showcase and support the publication of data, research and open source tools for collaborative, reproducible and transparent environmental data science. We're trying to follow uh, principles of reproducible, scalable and shareable environmental data science, scalable uh, mainly because we're trying to highlight open source developments that are scalable like the Pangeo stack and things that are shareable. Uh, in this case, we are using Jupyter book to have all the notebooks in a website and that is easy to share to others and different kind of uh, ways to share this kind of uh, artifacts. 
So the mission of the initiative is to educate and leverage good scientific software and data management practices among environmental scientists through peer-reviewed, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable computational notebooks. Our vision is environmental scientists work collaborative to demonstrate and communicate their science through fair computational notebooks and have gained significant skills to publish in notebooks based scholarly publication systems. This uh, la last kind of vision is because in the future, there is a already kind of initiative by the American Geoscience Unions to have the notebook file format as a, the main artifact to publish papers. And for instance, you can easily reproduce the figure and running uh, through the narrative, see how you can up potentially this figure will generate it. And there is a kind of investment on that. And in the last uh, Geoscience Union meeting in San Francisco, they launched this initiative called No, no Boots Now. So in somehow it is book is aiming to approach this next generation of uh, publishing uh, in the scientific uh, community. So, so far, uh, maybe if you visit the website that is here indicated in all the slides, we have a gallery and at the moment we have almost uh, 13 notebooks and each of the notebooks uh, has a kind of uh, labels on, on top of that, uh, that indicate which environment we are working, what kind of uh, like aspect of the data science component we are using, exploration modeling, uh, if this type of submission is related to a special issue or a kind of a standard submission, we have a kind of different submission types. And if we are using, it's a notebook about Python or using R or Julia. So most of the notebooks are Python. We are trying to highlight uh, as well some budgets about the license. Uh, we are trying to indicate if, if this notebook is working according to an automate, automate checking that we are doing. And as well, all the notebooks are DOI targets. Uh, sorry, but I heard some, maybe someone that is of the commutes. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, very important of all these uh, notebooks, we try to keep a kind of similar structure. So they have a title. As I say, we have some certain badges. Uh, we have a badge, for instance, about the review process. So you can see how was the initial version of the notebook and how through the review process that this is part of the community process, uh, this notebook have a better quality and a better structure, thanks to the work of these volunteers uh, that help with the review. We have, a, for instance, a collaboration with a platform that helps to make the discoverability of these notebooks easier, and it's Rohu, and, and maybe I won't, uh, won't go take details of that, but it's similar to Zenodo, but it focuses to explore all the metadata of the notebooks to make them more discoverable to search engines like Open Air, that is a famous one for discovering open science uh, artifacts. And finally, as I say, all these notebooks are the old, the old target, and we are trying to use uh, GCAP actions to, to try to check that they are uh, working and they are reproducible in somehow. So in terms of the publishing process, uh, I would say that uh, as a, if you want to contribute to the ADS book, there are different ways to contribute in this publishing process. You can also contribute to the source code. There is another way to contribute. You can contribute as well, identifying issues in the, in the test of the, of the web page. But if you are interested to contribute in the publishing process, we have authors, we have reviewers, uh, we have editors in chief that essentially uh, maintainers and editors who uh, moderate the conversation between authors and reviewers, and we have a role of community. In, in terms of the stages, uh, we have uh, like seven stages. And the first stage is the no good idea, where essentially anyone uh, that is interested in the this book can, can come and open an issue in the this book repo and say, I have this idea, we have a template for open this idea, and we validate this idea uh, together uh, with the editors in chief and try to say, okay, this is a tool that I'm gonna use. This is the so programming software and so on. Once this idea is validated, we start the preparation where we continue the conversation, but the authors already use a template that is available in the this book that aims to accelerate and create a minimal working version of the, of the notebooks. After that, we already start the review process and this is happening in the this book and the notebook repo. And here, the editors moderate the conversation with the authors and reviewers. Once the reviewers uh, recommend the publication of the notebook, we have the post print. And in the post print, it's essentially that uh, the editors in chief validate that the uh, proof of concept uh, notebook or all the interactivity is looking 
uh, as the original authors and optionally reviewers indicate and suggest. Finally, in the publication, uh, this is something that the authors can promote optionally in their social media, but uh, in the ages book, we have a strong uh, connection with the social media. So we have uh, like collaborators that help us to promote these notebooks uh, through, Twitter, through Twitter or Mastodon. And finally, in the post-publication process is something that uh, can be a role of the community because someone can say this notebook is no lo longer working. I have this addition, this new software version that can be more helpful. And if there is a substantial contribution, this person of the community can have authorship of the, of the, of the new version of the notebook. So these are the different ways that you can contribute. And everyone in this call uh, is welcome really to see in the different roles how you can get involved. Uh, in terms of the infrastructure, uh, we're trying to maximize open infrastructure. So the ADS book uh, repositories is hosted at the Alan Turing Institute. As I say, we start with the notebook idea and we have then the stage from preparation to review. In here, here in this in this in this stage, we are using an existing technology that is uh, provided by the 2I2C. 2I2C is a non-profit organization based in the US, and they are developing technologies, uh, democratizing uh, open source uh, open source developments for education, and they have a kind of development they report to Docker, and we are using that one to have a template that essentially is containerize, containerizing the the software requirements of your notebook and made that in somehow uh, easier to share uh, to others and as well to facilitate to do some automate checking that we are doing with the notebooks. Uh, one, the author used this uh, template. He, with the, uh, with the editor in chief, we validate the minimal version using binder. So we check that the outputs of the cells are working and there is a minimal working version. After validating the minimal working version, we transfer from the author personal GitHub to the EDS Book Gallery GitHub organization. And here we are using uh, certain technologies to, that allow us to host this report to Docker image uh, in this case, Red Hat, and it's very similar to the Docker, Docker Hub, but uh, this one you have more, uh, at more less restriction in terms of the pools that you can have for the images, and we have more control of that. We are using Review MB, that is a plugin in GitHub to facilitate the review and check the difference between the different version of the notebooks. And we are using GitHub Actions in this particular uh, stage to check that the notebooks are uh, in somehow reproducible and are generating the, the, the expected outputs. Yeah. Then in the postprint of publication, what we do is like uh, we assign a uh, all, all these uh, different notebooks have a unique identifier. And essentially, we are using GitHub Sun models that, are, that then allow us to uh, have them in the main repository. And we render the HTML version of these notebooks in the uh, Jupyter book that is hosted in Netlify that uh, is open, it's for free for open source projects. And here we assign the, the version of the of the of the published Jupyter notebook uh, through Zenodo. So all 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 the notebooks are suitable and, and all of them have a version. Uh, as I mentioned, anyone from the community is welcome to provide feedback of these notebooks. And if you find there are like uh, like I would say changes to to make in this notebook, uh, we can accept that and make changes. And if those changes are like substantial, uh, you can have a new version and as well authorship of the notebooks. Uh, I won't go in detail, but this is the plan for that we are trying to uh, maximize the discover, discover, discover uh, to discover the the these objects uh, in like open science engines and other communities. So in Rohu, it's very similar to in some house and other, but it allows to host different like research objects. A research object is a kind of living object and it's something that is evolving over time. So there is one uh, a research object is executable notebooks and, um, and this kind of research objects are supported by this platform. Very important of this platform is that uh, it allows to understand which metadata you have in the notebook. So it has certain data mining service that say this notebook is about air quality modeling, it's about uh, marine, mar maritime uh, modeling and so on. So all these services are offered by this platform. So we are trying to use that one and they are using standards to uh, keep these uh, research, objects, or, or research objects like uh, 
uh, road grade is a kind of standard that allow to export in case the Rojo initiative is over and no longer funded. I can reuse this road grade to open in, an, in, an, in, a, in another platform and it made easier to, to keep the sustainability of the project uh, 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 for this. So key achievements today. Uh, we have guidelines or templates. Uh, these are basically based on existing similar initiatives uh, that we have in the open science community. At the moment, we have 13 community-led peer-reviewed notebooks. Uh, 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 we are trying, as, a, as we mentioned, we're trying to innovate to have this fair concept. So you can see the start of the, of the notebooks and try to track which is the latest changes. And we are using platforms like Rojo to maximize this fair and trying to score the well, what is the which is the fairness of the notebooks. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the project, we have many community calls and trying to cover many many topics. But now we're trying to uh, stop avoiding duplicating efforts. So we are working with the Turing Way and we participate in the Turing Way collaboration cafes to have more visibility there and trying to support people who are there who are interested in environmental sustainability and computational notebooks and other topics. Uh, we have uh, working meetings about infrastructure. So if you are if you are interested in the infrastructure this project, this is happening every second Friday, uh, every month. And we have this information in the website. Uh, main contribution to open science, uh, as I say, in the Turing Way, we are strong collaborators of this initiative. We were inspired by the Turing Way and we have contributed about concepts, about research objects, script illustration. We have a channel about environment and sustainability in the Turing Way, where we are aiming to connect EDS book and going beyond computational research, research and try to connect with the open movements in climate and environment, environment, environmental issues, like the environmental impact of digital research. Last year, uh, we partnered with the climate informatics uh, community and Cambridge University Press to host the Climate Informatics Repository Challenge. And EGS Book was the main platform to submit interactive repository reports. Uh, Pangeo, that is also another community that we strongly collaborate with. Uh, most of the notebooks that we have in the EGS Book highlight this kind of uh, software stat that they develop with the Pangeo community because the software is scalable, so you can run this uh, a small example, then if you have larger computers, you can potentially run over big data. And that's something that we like about Pangeo and trying to find in other communities in R and Julia where possible this kind of developments. Uh, we have contributed in the organization of sessions in EGU 22, EGU 23, and workshops uh, in the geospatial and satellite, satellite ima image uh, communities. Uh, last year. So it's a way that we have more visibility of the EGS book project and as well visibility of what we do at the Turing and as well uh, something that uh, provides feedback about the project. So now let's focus on the Repository Challenge. Uh, Repository Challenge was a great opportunity uh, that we have last year and essentially in partnership with uh, partners in, in Europe we have access to free compute, cloud computing. And it was essential because uh, this cloud computing allow everyone around the world to try to uh, have the same uh, software and the same hardware and try to work in things in, in, in notebooks that they, they were creating. Essentially the notebooks, the participants were aiming to reproduce papers of the Environmental Data Science Journal in Cambridge University Press. All these peer reviewed notebooks were published in the EDS book. Uh, during the a month time that we organized this, it was very intense one, but it was very productive one. We connect these uh, teams with reviewers and essentially we have, uh, after the three months or two months of the challenge, we have the final version published in the ages boot. It was supported by, of course, the Alan Turing, uh, University of Cambridge and Simula uh, in Norway, that it was a kind of the connection that we have to access uh, to free cloud computing. Uh, everyone is welcome to, to access to the website. And it was a kind of uh, advertise that we did uh, with the Turing communication team. Um, we have all the videos of the onboarding, talk with experts and share out videos available in the this book YouTube channel. And it was a good uh, a way that opened this YouTube channel because we don't have a YouTube channel before this, but we found it very important to share the knowledge uh, for people who are interested in those kinds of uh, challenges. Uh, these submissions are online in EDS book. Uh, uh, in total, were three teams. 
uh, in this presentation, I will highlight the winning team and you can have a flavor what we aim to cover in a, in a high quality notebooks, uh, what, the, what the participants in this case uh, deliver. So this was the winning team in, in, in America. And in the left, you can see the notebook that they create. Uh, on, on the right, you can see the original paper. And you can see this notebook is in somehow have a good ratio between narrative and figures. And you can see that the participants are trying to uh, approximate very well to the uh, results of the original paper. So these were, the figures were created by the participants. So you can access how the figures were created thanks to this interactive notebook that are uh, now hosted by the, by the AGS book. Uh, a, a big challenge that we have in this notebook was that uh, they were handling a big data set that was almost 40 gigabytes and the original author hosted that data set in Zenodo. And what we did was in particular for making this notebook accessible to everyone was to convert this data set to more cloud optimized data set. So we converted this data set uh, from the original file format that was netcdf file to SAR and hosted in a kind of cloud storage cloud storage in Europe, and now it's more accessible, so people can access, access that large data set in very quick time. And we are using, in this case, Pangeo style to make this uh, easier. Very important about this paper, as you can see, and it's something that I encourage uh, hearing in this discussion, is that uh, we potentially can help each other. If you don't know one thing, potentially you are developing a notebook, Maybe try to connect with people who are interested to have this opportunity to review and provide feedback about your notebooks. And as you can see here, you have people from different universities and people from different institutes and different uh, seniority levels that collaborate each other to produce this notebook. And all, of, all these people have a uh, like, clear acknowledgement of, of the production of these kind of artifacts. Uh, in terms of the feedback, so. I, I guess in general, this was a feedback that I have for participants. So I guess it, we organized this in only three months period, but I guess we, we were very lucky to have very positive feedback in terms of the, of, of the feedback. They say we were always willing to help. Everything was well documented. We are trying to have a kind of separate web page that we indicate all the sets for the teams, for the reviewers. And I guess they, 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 in somehow this provide uh, really a good experience to everyone. Uh, everyone is welcome to visit some resources. As I say, we have the website where you can find the slides, uh, recordings, the structure of the challenge, the judging criteria, resources. Uh, inspired by uh, the outcomes, outcomes of this challenge, I have a personal perspective of this and the importance of reproducibility in environmental science. You can find these blog posts posted in the Turin uh, blog and essentially summarize uh, some of the outcomes of this of the challenge. And last year, Andrew McDonald, that he's uh, at Bath and as well Cambridge University, he presented the outcomes to this large audience as part of one session about open science. Um, okay, I guess maybe I, I have some time, maybe Harry, correct me if I have still some time, but I would like to cover uh, some, some things about the AGS book. So this is the, as I say, the GitHub repository that we have that is hosted at the Alan Turing Institute. And we have a readme that uh, follow very similar to the Turing way. And we have all the contributors and knowledge here. And we have the website that is essentially, you click here, you can go to the website. And the website, uh, uh, the main thing here is the gallery. And in the gallery, you can access all, all of the notebooks that uh, I, I showed you before, including this one that, that, that was the winning notebook. And for instance, uh, you can follow here all the structure and you can, for instance, have more interactivity. All these things are something that we help in the final stage of the production of the notebook. So it's something that you don't need to worry about. It's something that we help to have a more aesthetical and check which, which cells you need potentially to hide or not. It's something that we validate in the publication process. Uh, uh, we have different flavors of notebooks. So this is about uh, reproducibility, but for instance, we have a notebook about the ISNET. And ISNET, for instance, the source code, the initial source code was very difficult to understand and follow because the if you don't have the knowledge to run this, it was very difficult. So now in the ISNET repository, they point to this notebook 
in the source code and people is this this is one of the notebooks that i had more access we have more access um essentially it helps to understand in a few lines of code uh, what are the main things about the notebook and so you you can show about what they mean by ci forecasting and so on so people can have this interactivity and it's something that we're trying to promote in these notebooks um what else you can find uh, here in our community uh, more information about uh, the meeting structure that we have in the past and the meeting structure that we have now that as I say we are collaborating with the with the Turing way to try to be part of the conversation and we have a specific co-working sessions uh, uh, working essentially one hour every month on this and um, I, I would like to maybe to mention about the future of this uh, we are using Jupyter book but uh, we are aiming potentially to move the from Jupyter book and this notebook be more interactive and be more in terms of computational narrative. So we are testing now Miss Markdown. And Miss Markdown is very nice because it's a kind of template where it's aiming to have more in Markdown narrative and you can call like for instance different Jupyter notebooks within the same uh, narrative and it's, it made everything more uh, like interactive. And I will show one example here, for instance, you can play with the numbers and you can change here evaluation. So we are aiming to potentially be more interactive where possible in the future notebooks. We, we did a test of this. Uh, for instance, this was the winning notebook of the, of the challenge. And essentially this is how it's gonna look in the future uh, EDS book. We are trying to reduce the number of budgets and uh, potentially it's, more, it's gonna be more like a, a more fresh and readable this. In this case, this is part of the Notebooks Now initiative, but these uh, templates are uh, like usable for an initiative. We are contributing to that initiative and we are aiming that, for instance, you have more interactivity in, in the Notebooks in the website, so you can potentially see information of the papers and you can see as well, you, you can see the figure, a, a kind of like caption, uh, everything information on the, the figure in, in, the same, in the same page. And if you need more information how to generate this figure, you can go to the supporting documents that supporting documents in this in this case means like notebooks. So you can have here the cell, how you generate this figure and what you are doing in the main document is to call the, the figure and continue the, the narrative. So this is the aspect that we are gonna work in the, this book in the coming months. Okay, I guess I am about finishing. So priority areas, we, we would like to make more rich uh, annotations and metadata in the notebooks. We would like to run a uh, health check-in of the notebooks. So checking that they are reproducible every month and checking because at the moment it's, it's very manual. Uh, we are just checking when there are changes, substantial changes manually, and it's something that is not optimal. Uh, in terms of the user interface and experience, uh, incredible discoverability, the current gallery, uh, we would like to have more search bots or maybe a, ch a different checklist that you can say, I would like to have a notebook that uh, is related about this aspect. So you can, uh, or is using certain tools so you can facilitate that uh, because there are different open source, source developments and people are not familiar with, we would like to have a section dedicated which are the notebooks per, per requisite. So people, we can point to educational resources who say, okay, if you are using it's array, this is a good guy. Uh, how to use how to use uh, its array. There is a nice resource by the Pangeo US community that is Pitya project, and they have this kind of developments in Python. I would like to find similar stuff in R and Julia. And um, here is the supporting notebooks. Here is the call to everyone here. If you have any notebook that is preliminary resource or you explore in a data set. Uh, you want to share this one for uh, a conference or a large audience. I'm very happy that we explore this and trying to publish uh, within the community that we have here now, maybe to review, find someone to review and improve the narrative of such as open source developments to uh, achieve the same results. And in terms of community engagement, like the Spanish that we did with the climate informatics, I guess we would like to create this kind of connection and find more. Uh, contribution to the notebooks now that is the future of uh, scientific publishing uh, is something that we continue because it's the way that we know which is the cutting edge technologies so we would like to keep this engagement and in terms of the outreach and training we we are all trying to participate in webinars uh, thanks to this participation and repository challenge uh, i have been in participating in webinars about reproducibility and providing tools of that 
uh, mentoring programs. We would like people potentially through hackathons trying to uh, have these mentor programs that uh, aims to, uh, as I say, one of the aims is of the, the initiative mission is to educate and leverage good practices. So yeah, hackathons is a good opportunity for that. So big thanks to the open research communities, as I mentioned, some of them, uh, mainly uh, in Turing Way because uh, they were very, they have been very supportive of this project, and they we were inspired by the by the Turing Way. I I initially validated a uh, early prototype of this in 2021 in Open Life Science program that now is Open Seed Pro program, but it's very program about uh, open science leadership, and I learned a lot of the skills there. And EDS book community started with Scott essentially that was a uh, one of the advisors of this uh, with Kirsty. We take care, we take care, and we started this uh, project that been growing uh, with contributions, with ideas, and as well, we have uh, this pool of authors and reviewers. So you are welcome to learn more in the website, in the GitHub repository. As I say, we have the different like social media where you, we can promote your work and be more visible what you're doing in environmental data science. Thank you.